Hello viewers and welcome back to the channel for another video. I know what you're thinking, that's like two in a few days. Calm down Phil, you're going to hurt yourself, but I've had a coffee so I think I'm ready to go. So what are we doing in this video? Uh, as I mentioned in my uh, previous video about reshaping the seat, uh, I'm looking at changing the handlebars on this bike. Um, so I've done a bit of research on the GT forum on Facebook and uh, I've bought uh, a Rizoma uh, handlebar that um, looks to be better than the originals. Um, I've looked at the dimensions and hopefully it uh, feels a bit more uh, comfortable than these handlebars. Um, in fact, my, my cousin was one of the test riders uh, for Australian Motorcycle News magazine uh, last year when they were doing Bike of the Year and one of the bikes they tested was the GT. And one of his comments to me at the time was, the handlebars feel a bit weird. And I thought, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. But um, now that I've ridden it, they do feel a bit weird. And I think it's the angle that they come up and back. It just doesn't feel, just doesn't feel right, you know? So I've, I've played with the angle of them, etc. cetera. But um, I finally bit the bullet and bought another handlebar. So uh, let's have a look at what we've got and start pulling this apart. So this arrived this morning um, early and what it is is a Rizoma and it is a, what is it? MA009B bar. So this was suggested by one of the guys on the GT forums on uh, on Facebook. And as I say, I did a bit of research, looked at their website where they've got all the dimensions and I think it's gonna be better than the standard bar. So let's pull it out and have a look. So there's the bar out of its uh, packaging. It's actually a billet aluminium bar. So it's actually quite light compared to what I would expect from a steel bar. Um, the other thing is that um, the holes in the end, oh, there's a couple of plugs in there at the moment, but um, the internal diameter is a bit smaller than a standard one. I think the standard is like 14 mil or something. Uh, so I've heard that you do have to modify your bar ends to uh, fit inside there, but um, I presume that's a reasonably straightforward uh, process. In fact, on my last ride, one of my bar ends, this left one, uh, fell out. So that was a bit of a pain. I just discovered it when I got home. Uh, surprised that I didn't notice it as I was riding along. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, they supposedly stopped the bars uh, vibrating, but um, I didn't notice any difference between the left and right, even after that had fallen out. So yeah, maybe it's a placebo effect. Anyway, I've got one of those on order. It should be here in the next day or so. So um, um, that should be fine. Anyway, let's get to uh, removing this handlebar and comparing the shape between um, the new one and the old one. Now I'm going to put some towels over the tank and the fairing uh, to protect things while I take these bits and pieces off the uh, the old bars. Um, as I said, the paint on these tanks is very, very thin. And the reason I know that is because uh, I found a couple of small chips on the tank a couple of days ago. And you can tell, you can see that uh, like the paint is very thin. I would have thought that, you know, Suzuki could have afforded to put in a few more coats of paint on these tanks. It's not going to cost them too much more. But um, anyway, there was a couple of chips, which I don't know how they happened. Maybe I hit it with the, the petrol bowser as I was filling up. But um, just round about here, uh, there was a few little chips 
I don't know whether you can see that, but there's about six little little chip holes. So I got some paint uh, mixed up from the local store, dabbed those in until there was uh, quite a bit of paint in there, then very carefully uh, sanded the top back reasonably flat and then buffed it uh, so that it's shiny again. I mean, you can still see it, but um, better than uh, having those chips there, which I think was down to bare metal. So anyway, that's a, a lesson learned that the paint on these is very fragile. So be careful. I know there's uh, a few people have mentioned issues in in the forums that uh, the paint on the on the wheels and the tank, etc., is um, pretty fragile. So just be careful. Okay, so that's all of the uh, switch blocks and levers, etc., off uh, off the old bars. You notice that um, there's a couple of holes. So these are the locator holes for the for the switch blocks. So we'll have to drill them into the new bars once we work out the the correct position. But um, Let's take those completely off and put them on the bench and uh, have a look at the different shapes of the of the two bars. Right, so I've, I've clamped these two bars down on the bench so we can have a good look at them. Um, the new Rizoma is the one closest to us and the, the original one at the back. Now, if you look from the top, uh, very similar, they're, they're the same width, about 750 mils. Um, the Rizoma sort of uh, angles back slightly more, but very close. But the main difference is the way they angle up. So you can see the, the original bars at the back there um, angle up a lot more, whereas the new Rizomas are a lot flatter. So I'm hoping that sort of makes a difference to the feel of the handlebars. So, uh, and the other thing, as I say, the, there's the, the internal diameter of the standard bar, which I think, yeah, I'm not quite sure, I think that's 14 mil. The new ones, because that's billet aluminium, is, uh, is a smaller hole, so we'll have to modify the, um, the uh, bar end weights. So here's, here's one that uh, hasn't fallen off. Um, so yeah, basically we just have to turn down these, uh, I think you have to turn down that nut slightly to fit in and turn down that, um, that rubber piece there so that it fits in and then can be tightened up so that that expands and then keeps it in place, which obviously I didn't do properly for the left one after I put the heated grips on. Anyway, let's get these uh, mounted on and have a bit of a feel for the what sort of position I want. Uh, the Rizomas have this little grid uh, there underneath this bit of wood so that you can actually see the angle of, uh, you know, where it, where it sits with these, uh, with the uh, mounting bracket. So you can adjust it and then keep tabs of where you want that sitting. So let's get them on and um, see how they feel. All right, so that's just test fitted them on with nothing else on. And, uh, you know, feels pretty good, I think. Uh, as I say, there's a grid that comes on the Rizoma bar, so you know that not only that it's centered, but uh, then you can look at, um, you know, the angle you want on here. And round about zero at the moment feels okay, but uh, I'll fiddle around with that once we've... Um, once we put the grips on, etc. But um, yeah, feels okay, I think. Right, so that's them with the the grips on. Um, had to basically put them on one at a time because of the uh, cable lengths for the heated hand grips. Now this one I had to squeeze on very tightly. Normally you super glue those on, but uh, that's actually really tight, so that's not a problem. Um, I'll put a bit of uh, lubrication, a bit of oil around this one. Next thing we need to do is work out where we want these switch blocks 
because uh, we need to, as I say, drill some holes in here where, for the locating pins for the switch blocks, uh, which are sort of fixed in position then. So have to sort of work out where the handlebars want to go, where the switch blocks are good so you can reach them easily with your thumbs, etc. And then uh, drill some five millimeter holes in the bars uh, so that they lock in position. And then, um, yeah, then we put the levers back on and we're pretty much done, apart from turning down the, uh, the bar end weight. Right, so I've put these switch blocks on loosely. Luckily the screws are long enough so that uh, you can still sort of get them in position with, uh, without the little pin uh, going into its hole. And sort of fiddled around with the positions. Obviously the left one's important. You need to be able to get to the blinker switch fairly easily with your thumb. Over here there's not too much to do. I mean the the uh, cruise control switch is hard to reach across to get to anyway so it doesn't really matter where that goes so I think they're in a reasonable sort of position um, so now that they're in position I can mark where the little hole needs to be it's on top here and then at the front over here and we'll drill a couple of five mil holes measuring them accurately of course um, and then screw them in. Um, so just that's that's feeling quite good um, on this little scale here on the Rizoma bars. I'm on zero at the moment, which feels pretty good actually. So um, there's no issues around hitting the hitting the screen or the tank, etc. So um, I think these are going to be good. So you can see I've marked with tape where the edge of each of the switch blocks is and then also the centre line of where the pin is on each of those switch blocks and the pin is, uh, was it about three and a half millimetres, the centre of the pin is about three and a half millimetres from the edge. So basically we need to come back here three and a half millimetres in line with that, centre punch it and drill a couple of five mil holes. Uh, I'll cover everything up so we don't get aluminium shards everywhere. And uh, let's go. Right, so I've drilled the two holes and deburred them and hopefully kept all the aluminium filings out of everything. So we'll take those off, screw that switch block on, put some lubrication on, this side and put that uh, switch block on and then we'll start having a look at what we need to do for the bar end so I actually know we'll probably put the levers on first all right great success right so that's all buttoned up the switch blocks are on uh, the levers are on I've adjusted them to what feels like a reasonable position which I may sort of fine-tune once I um, go for a ride. Uh, I might just move that clutch cable down a little bit. So we've got, looks like we've got a bit of slack in there, which I might have pulled through while I was um, moving the handlebars. So the next thing is to modify these bar ends so they fit in here. So um, the standard size for internal diameter is about a 17 and a half millimeters. Whereas these ones, because they're built aluminium, they're actually 14 millimetres. So there was somebody on the forum said that they had turned theirs down and fitted them okay. So I only have one at the moment because, as I say, I lost lost one the other day. So I'll have a bit of a look and see if it uh, looks like something that I can do easily. I think the guy on the forum had a lathe to do it. Um, but um, hopefully we can come up with some sort of solution. Right, so there's the standard Suzuki bar end weight. Uh, you get the weight bolt through the middle. There's three metal uh, washers, thick washers, nut at the end, and two rubber bushes that expand once you once you tighten it up. Um, it's a six mil thread here. You can see 
that they have sort of burred over that thread right at the end so that that nut doesn't easily come off and as you're unscrewing it rattle around inside the um, inside the handlebar so sort of tossing up whether I just buy some uh, bar end weights that suit the smaller diameter or have a look at modifying these so yeah still thinking about it all right so that's it exploded out uh, so we can see the bolt the actual weight itself uh, thick flat washer uh, rubber grommet another flat washer uh, spacer another flat washer and this uh, rubber uh, grommet with the square shaft and then this interesting looking uh, nut at the end so it's the Nut at the end would need to be turned down. These washers either need to be turned down or replaced. And then the rubbers turned down as well. That's probably going to be the most difficult bit. Right, so I think that even though I have my replacement left hand one on order and it's coming, uh, I think I'm going to buy some aftermarket ones. Uh, that are designed with uh, you know the different sizes of handlebars um, and use them if uh, if I can notice any vibration difference then I might have a look at modifying these but as I say when the uh, left hand one was missing I didn't notice any particular difference in the amount of vibration through the handlebars so maybe it's just cosmetic or as I say a sort of placebo effect Right, so that's pretty good service. The genuine Suzuki one that I uh, ordered from Mick Hones a few days ago has arrived. And then overnight I ordered these Oxford bar ends, which are designed for the, uh, the smaller diameter bar ends. Uh, so they will fit in. Uh, I'd really like to go with the original OEM look. Plus also these um, these bar ends are a lot heavier than the, these aftermarket ones. So I'm going to see if I can come up with a combination of uh, bits from these ones, bits from those ones, and uh, a few other things to um, basically fit uh, fit these into the bars and uh, but uh, make it look like the original OEM. So let's see what we can do there. Right, so using a combination of bits and pieces, I've used the, the weights and the, the screws from the original Suzuki ones, and then the rubber bits and uh, uh, nuts on the inside with a, a bit of extra rubber tubing in there. So they feel quite tight now, so uh, hopefully they won't fall out. So. I'll go for a test ride and see how these bars feel. A few minutes later. Right, well, after that uh, test ride, uh, I must admit I'm much happier with the riding position, especially, you know, uh, sculpting the seat in the last video and these handlebars. Uh, I did come back and adjust them down just a fraction and also uh, drilled out the locating hole for the pin on this uh, switch block here, just slightly bigger so I could twist it down just to, the uh, blinker switch was just, you know, just a fraction too high, but it all feels really good now. So very happy with my decisions. Um, and much happier with the with the riding position on the bike now. So once again, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. 
uh, if you like the series or other videos, subscribe and uh, let your mates know, especially if they've got a GT, there might be some useful information for them. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll see how she goes down to Phillip Island and back. And uh, we'll see you after that in the next video. Bye now.